we should not be having the government uh, take over uh, and um, inject itself in a way where the government actually becomes the owner of these securities, makes the taxpayer assume the risk. Uh, you know, at what price? You know, at what price is the Secretary of the Treasury going to pay? You know, here we are, we're talking about giving um, a person who's not elected himself, uh, and it, by the way, he's working for an administration which is clearly on the way out, no longer will have to face the people, and we're going to give this person unfettered discretion to decide who's going to get money uh, and how much, given the fact that these um, mortgage-backed securities currently don't have any real market value because there's no market for them. So my, uh, my solution uh, would encourage the government to establish a market rather than having the government be the market because when the government is the market, um, we have to leave this to somebody who has um, unfettered discretion uh, and, and isn't going to be responsible to the people and leave it to that person to decide how much to pay and who they're going to pay. That's just not the way this country is supposed to work, and, and that's not the way we should be doing business in this country. Uh, I spent 10 years of my life uh, fighting the Soviet Union uh, not to, you know, to defeat communism, not to have a government that was going to actually be in charge of every facet of, of business in this country, own an insurance company, uh, own the mortgage business, now wants to actually own the mortgages. I just think that's wrong. I think one of the other significant um, and unfortunate side effects of this whole financial crisis is that it has completely blown all the other topics out the water in terms of what's going on uh, in as we run up to the November 4th election. Uh, and I think that's very unfortunate. I was, uh, I was hopeful that uh, however the election came out, it would provide us a referendum on a, uh, on a national energy policy. Well, I'd like to see us uh, aggressively get more American energy um, any way we can. Uh, we start with getting more American oil and natural gas so that we do not have to send uh, capital overseas, which we are doing and have been doing for a number of years. Uh, that's number one. That, mean that means more sure. drilling. Does that mean Anwar? That yes, mean? yes. Yeah. Um, two, we need to aggressively invest in alternatives. Which alternative is ultimately going to save the day? Does anybody know? I, I, I don't know either because there are a lot of technical problems with solar, wind power, um, biomass. There are issues with all of those we need to invest and see which ones uh, will uh, will succeed. You know, ultimately, science, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, the marketplace will pick the winners. Um, we do need to invest in nuclear power. Uh, nuclear power can help this country tremendously, um, but um, we are not doing the things that we need to do to expand nuclear power in this country, and we need to do more as to make it part of that package. Uh, and we need to be more efficient. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's all of those things. Um, but, uh, you know, the real differences, and there are some, some differences between um, what I want and what Joe Courtney wants. Uh, drilling's one of them. Uh, two is nuclear power. Uh, he's not really embraced nuclear power. Uh, he says he has no problems with it. But on the other hand, he says he can't support expansion of nuclear power unless we solve the waste issue, and solving the waste issue is surely a matter of political will. So we need to move forward on all those things in order to get a uh, sound uh, energy policy for this country. Healthcare uh, is something that should be basic uh, and ex to, to everybody's well-being, so it should be accessible and affordable to have health insurance. Uh, but I don't see that as the role of the federal government. Uh, I don't see that if, if we have the federal government adopt a program, um, it will not be, we will not then be able to change it and we will be stuck with the program that we have for who knows how long. Um, 
and uh, let me use uh, Social Security as an example uh, of what I mean by that. Social Security is a completely different discussion. Um, however, Social Security was a program that was put in in the 1930s and has remained basically unchanged. And though everybody talks about the fact that Social Security needs to be somehow reformed, we can't come to any consensus and so the program stays without changing. No Child Left Behind went in in 2002. And there's, there's no shortage of discussion about what's wrong with the program and how it needs to be revised, yet we haven't been able to revise it. And that was one of Courtney's um, platforms when he ran for office. He was going to go to Congress and he was going to improve No Child Left Behind. Sure enough, he's on the education uh, subcommittee or on the education committee in uh, the House of Representatives. Yet no bill got through to make any changes in No Child Left Behind. Because when you have these national programs, we actually stop progress on making the program better. We, we may be able, under the right conditions, to adopt a program, but once we adopt it, uh, we will then argue forever as to how to make it better. And, and you, will, you will freeze in time the program that you have. That's why I'm not in favor of having a federal program that covers everybody when it's trying to fix uh, what is essentially a, a significant deficiency in our society. Massachusetts has, uh, has adopted a uh, universal health care system. If it's working, then why can't Connecticut copy it and provide it for the citizens of Connecticut? Why do we need the national government to do that? We don't. Uh, and if it's not working, then we should stay away from it. Or we should tailor it to the unique needs of Connecticut. We need to, we need to reduce uh, government spending. We need to look at programs uh, which are, uh, which first of all, are, uh, don't make any sense. Uh, I would take the farm bill as an example. We paid billions of dollars in farm subsidies. We're actually paying uh, people not to produce, uh, which doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and that's wrong and we need to stop it. Uh, so there's a lot of government spending which is spent on programs which don't make any sense and I'll give that as a, as a primary example. There are other programs that quite frankly are, are rife with fraud and so we end up with money being stolen out of the taxpayer's pocket. Uh, take Medicare, um, reported $60 billion in Medicare fraud last year alone. That's a big dollar number. Uh, and, and so, and nobody's doing anything about that. That's, and that's, that's tremendous waste. So we need to look at where there is government waste and we need to look at the government programs that don't make any sense um, and we need to, uh, we need to uh, rein in the government spending. We need to be looking at these programs that can and should be given control back to states and, and giving the control back to the states and give the funding back to the states. I mean, ultimately it all comes from the same pocket. You know, everybody out there can pay taxes, can pay them to Hartford, they can pay them to Washington, D.C. It, it's the same money. I'd like to see this war in Iraq end as soon as possible. Uh, I'd like to see us start bringing our troops home from Afghanistan as well and spending less money there as well. Um, these have been very expensive um, campaigns and, uh, and, and very costly to the American taxpayer. Victory looks like coming home and not having Iraq as a nation implode uh, and, uh, and not having it uh, be essentially become a territory of Iran, not having Shiites and Sunnis at war with each other in a geographic area spreading from Iran uh, east, I'm sorry, west to Saudi Arabia. Because that, that unfortunately was the real possibility after we went in there and destabilized uh, Iraq. Uh, and so now we need to come out of there um, and victory would be to come out and not have that area-wide destabilization uh, occur. In order for us to have the Navy that we're supposed to have in this country, it's going to take a tremendous amount of dollars. And a lot of those dollars are because the mismanagement in the surface ship construction industry. So yeah, there's a lot of places in the Department of Defense where good management would save money, and we need to do that. And nobody's talking about that. And you're also going to find that, I mean, this is a problem 
with the United States Navy. I, you know, I, I've said repeatedly that we should be having a naval approach to fighting this war on terror that would make a lot more sense than taking hold land everywhere because that's not going to work. Um, we'll never be able to do that country by country in the Middle East. Uh, but in order to have a naval strategy, we've got to have a navy. And one of these days, we are going to turn around as a country and ask the United States Navy to do something. And then we're going to find out that we don't have a navy. We don't have a navy capable of doing it. And then they're going to look back over the last 20 years, and they'll add the next however many years between now and the day we come and reach this question. And they'll say, how did this happen? And it's going to be just like the energy crisis, where we had this problem for 30 some odd years brewing, and nobody did anything about it. Well. We're 20 years into this problem in the United States Navy, and nobody's doing anything about it. And it's a huge problem. And nobody's even talking about it but me. We should be buying submarines because the country needs them. Okay? The, the country right now, the Navy has said that it has a minimum requirement of 48 attack submarines. You know, in my entire time in the United States Navy, um, we never had less than 55, and we were always extraordinarily busy. I don't know how they're going to do it with 48. To me, 48 seems too, too little. You know, we, we, have studies, we have studies done within the last 10 years that say the right number is up at 68 to 72. I mean, 48 is a bare bones minimum. And yet, we also have the force projection going down to 41 submarines. We are short. We need seven more and we've got one-third of a submarine uh, additional, and, and that's a great victory. No, we need to be buying submarines in order to support national security. We need to be buying an additional seven submarines in order to support national security. Uh, and Congress needs to do it. It's Congress's congressional responsibility, uh, constitutional responsibility, to provide and maintain a Navy. Exactly what it says in Article One. That's what they need to do.